Hey guys, um, this episode's entitled Personal Conveyance, but as always, we'll open with prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. So today we're going to talk about a very controversial subject, all right? I need to go ahead and do a couple of disclaimers real quick. Rusty. One, the federal law is the minimum standard, all right? Companies have the right to impose stricter laws than the feds or the right to refuse personal conveyance altogether. The information I'm about to share with you comes directly from the FMCSA. At the time of this video, this information is up to date and accurate. Please review a copy of your company's safety manual to see how their policies may differ. Remember, if you are following the law, but not your company policy, you may not be fined, but you may get fired. And if your company policy doesn't follow the law, you may not be fired. However, you will still be fined if you're caught in violation. Okay. So with that being said, personal conveyance. Personal conveyance is using a commercial motor vehicle to do anything personal as long as it does not, it it can't progress the load or to help the company out. So there is no limit on the distance that personal conveyance can be, not by the feds, all right? It also, no matter what any of these laws are you're following, it always states, The driver cannot be fatigued or ill. Also, it doesn't alleviate your responsibility to drive the CMV in a responsible and safe manner. Okay? Manner. Manner. I do. So I'm going to dive into this right here. Now, I'm going to put a link in the uh, description for where you can go and get this information yourself. I want you to know I highly suggest you printing off the four rules that I'm about to tell you, because if you get pulled over and doing one of those four four rules, uh, be able to have the conversation with the DOT. May not work in your favor. However, at least you, as long as you're respectful, and de- you know, depending on your demeanor and depending on theirs, definitely they should at least still have a conversation with you, and you may be okay. In the event that they decide they want to give you a warning instead of a ticket. Do everything you can, beg for the ticket. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, but if you get a ticket and you're following the law, you'll be able to write in and you can get that taken off of your, uh, off of your record. If you, have, um, if you get a warning, there's no way to get it off and then it can still affect your score. Um, all right, with that being said, I'm gonna dive right in. I apologize, I just got off of work. So, um, <clears throat> These four things that I'm going to tell you are spelled out very specifically. You can use them for. There are other things that you are kind of gray area and you could use personal conveyance for or PC. However, this is the only four that I'm comfortable in telling you. And truly, there's only three of them that I would genuinely use. Okay. And and I'll tell you what that is as well. Um, So the first one, it says a restaurant and entertainment from an in route lodging hotel or truck truck stop so if you get to a place where you're parking all right you, let's just say it's a truck stop and you get to that truck stop and you uh you go off duty all right cuz this is a pc as an off duty status by the way so you go off duty and you're you go in, you check it out, you're going to get something to eat, and you find out that all they have is the greasy burgers or what have you, and you say you're a health nut. You can then go back to your truck, go off-duty PC, and you can drive to a restaurant. All right? That is completely acceptable. The entertainment side of it, so it's a restaurant or entertainment. The entertainment side is, say you go in and you decide you want to play the slot machines, and they don't have any of the one-armed bandits here at this truck stop. You can go back, off-duty, personal conveyance, drive to another place, a truck stop, um, casino, whatever it is, and 
there you can sit and you can play your slot machines. This is completely legal, okay? Now, you still have to give yourself enough time to be able to rest, and that's just basically what they say. However, you can use this to go. Now, you go to a restaurant, you turn around, and you come back. The term that we always use is return to origin. However, there, there is no requirement to do so. Therefore, there's actually no law about doing that. So if you go and you go food and entertainment, right, and you go and you eat, then you turn right back around and you say return to origin and you're going back to where you're going to be going to sleep at. I've been pulled, oh, I've been pulled in and had my logs pulled multiple times. I've never had an issue with that return to origin as long as that's what I was doing. I was documenting it correctly. From a driver's terminal to their home residence or a drop lot and their home residence. This is number two. Okay, this is the one that I really wouldn't use. Uh, a lot of companies won't allow you to do it anyway. However, if you have the opportunity to, the company allows you to do it, make sure you're doing it correctly. Because here's the thing. Technically, in writing, if your home terminal is in Logansport, Indiana, and your home residence is in Loosedale, Mississippi, you can finish your day out with hours at your home terminal, then turn around, put it on PC, and drive the 2,000 plus miles to get to Loosedale all completely on personal conveyance. Now, the caveat is, just like I said at the top, Cannot be fatigued, cannot be ill. So if you're weaving in your lane and the DOT officer pulls you over and says, hey, why were you leaving in your, weaving in your lane, driver? Oh, because I was a little tired. Bam. They have you. Now you were driving personal conveyance and, too, and fatigued. So you have to be very clear and very careful with what you're saying here. So uh, also it says a drop lot. That is not a shipper or receiver. That is a specific lot, place where you drop a trailer and pull another trailer out or where you drop the trailer all together and you bobtail out. Now, if you rent a space at a truck stop, drop your trailer there, put a kingpin lock on it, you turn around and you bobtail home, you know, a thousand miles, you can do that on PC um, legally, okay? But again... No fatigue, not ill. So the next thing we're going to cover is, um, that's number two. Number three, nearby reasonable safe location to obtain your required rest after loading or unloading. And the resting location must be the first such location reasonably available. All right, so if I'm finished at a receiver or I just got loaded, and I've been off duty for four or five hours because it's taking them forever. So I'm back in the sleeper unit sleeping. They get me unloaded or they get me finished and I'm sitting there and now I can leave or they're making me leave because I can't finish out my break right there. I can put it on personal conveyance and in the comments you put safe parking or safe location. Do not put safe haven, please. Because now you're using a term that's in the FMCSA that is only made for hazmat drivers and what have you. It's not safe haven. It's safe location or safe parking. All right. That's very important. It's the only time you can leave that shipper or the receiver after getting loaded or unloaded under personal conveyance. It's very important to note that. Um when it says the first search location that's reasonably available, that means it needs to be the first one closest to you that has parking. So if you go to the first reasonable location and you get there and you go into the parking lot and there is no parking, pull out your phone, do a little couple of camera shots, a little video, and show the parking lot, and then you can go to the next one. What I've always done is I got there and there's parking's all jammed up. There's no parking. I would do that. I would go off-duty. I would turn around and do off-duty again, personal conveyance. And then I would say the same thing again, you know, safe parking. Um, 
and then I, I would put on there what it is because that's not the first and actually you should probably just stay in the regular personal conveyance part but you just want to document that you stop there at the first one because that gives you a legal right to go there um moving a cmv at the request of a safety official during the driver's off duty time that's number four now it doesn't say a cop all right it says a safety official so Let's say there's a, a yard jockey who comes by and a, or yard dog and he comes by and you're sleeping in your truck, you know, parked over at the side inside of this facility. He comes over to you and he bangs on your door or the side of your sleeper. We've all been there, right? And he tells you, hey, you can't park here. It's not safe. I've got to move trailers in and out. That's a safety official. Now, if he wants you to move on the other side of the yard, not a problem. Off-duty personal conveyance. Asked to move by SO. That's a safety official. All right. If he tells you you have to get outside of it, it's not safe to stay in here because we're going to lock you in. You have to leave. Off-duty personal conveyance. Asked to move by SO. All right. Now you're going to go and you're going to find the first available safe place to park. Okay, it's not the same as using the first available safe parking. You were asked to be moved by an SO. He can move you inside the facility. He can move you outside of the facility. All right. Now, using PC is a privilege, not a right, unless you own the CMV and you're running up underneath your own authority. At that point in time, by the law, it is your right. You get to do whatever you want with it. And you can... but. It's not, it is a privilege if you're not owning the authority and you don't own the truck. So the rules and the things that I've told you today, please, for your sake, do not go to your company and, and try to fight your safety person with these rules. These are just what I'm telling you that will help you stay out of trouble with the DOT if you get pulled in your locks. Now, some people don't care, and they'll just open your PC wide open. Don't care what you do with it, but you still need to make sure that you care about it, okay? And that's the reason that I'm, I'm letting you know these, and that's the, that's the little deal for my, you know, CYA on that. Now, um, I'm going to give you a very, because I wanted you to know I'm giving you pieces of a cornerstone that we're putting together, and then we're going to build all into that wisdom I, I told you that God had had uh, bestowed upon me, all right, the gifts that he gave me with that, so that we're going to tie things in. But I'm going to give you an example right now. So under personal conveyance, I have done all my trip planning. I did everything right, but my appointment time was incorrect on the... Uh, my appointment time was incorrect on, on the load offer that I received by my dispatcher. So I get to the facility at, say, 20 hundred, and my appointment was at 2100, according to my dispatch. When I get there, the immediate thing I do is, as I'd said before, you know, you only have to log that time that you're doing paperwork for load, unload. So I get there, put it on duty, do load, unload, right? I go inside. And I say, hey, I'm here to get unloaded. You know, I have an appointment at 2100. They look through the manifest and go, no, you don't have an appointment until 0600 tomorrow. Go, okay, I need to be able to park. You know, I'm almost out of time. All right, sorry, that's not my problem. That's your problem. You can't stay here and you need to leave. Now, you just did load, unload, right? So you've documented your time. However, you now have a loaded trailer. By the way, personal conveyance can be used, loaded or unloaded, doesn't matter as long as you were following the rules that we talked about. So now I have no time and I can't make it back by 0600 in order to make my appointment because I still need 10 hours off. What am I going to do? Well, there's a few things you can do that's incorrect, and I've maybe guilty of that in the past, but according to our rules, we have two choices right now. We can try to find safe parking, or we were asked to move by a safety officer. 
See, if we try to find safe parking, we're not allowed to come back. Okay? We have to come back on the drive line. But if I'm asked to move by a safety officer and told to move back by a safety officer, well, I can move because the safety officer told me to. And I can move back because the safety officer told me to. Well, Terry, that's kind of split in hairs. Not a problem. Let's do it this way because I know how to use my split sleeper berth now. I'm going to take away the, um, I'm going to keep the load unload and I'm going to use the personal conveyance option now to leave after loading for nearest safe parking. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to hit my nearest safe parking. Okay, now I have a few minutes to get back, so I'm hoping that I have, you know, I have to, I have to really make decisions here. Am I close enough to make this back? Even with the clock, this time that's on my clock right now, if I've got 15 minutes of drive time, I should be able to get back. So I'm going to go to my, uh, to the nearest safe parking, and I'm going to park, and I'm going to put it in the sleeper berth. I'm going to stay there for seven hours minimum. Then I'm going to turn around because of the facility telling me that I had a 0600 appointment. So now I'm going to stay seven hours, seven and a half, eight hours. I'm going to come back and I'm going to drive back. I have 15 minutes of drive time still available. Why? Because I'm using the split sleeper berth rule. So I'm going to drive back. And as soon as I hit that facility, I'm going to, because I already did the load on load from the night before, I'm just going to go off duty. And I'm going to tell them, hey, I'm off. I'm here, log my stuff in, I'm off duty. And I'm going to sit and I'm going to park. When they make me move again, off duty, personal conveyance, asked to move by a safety official. If I did seven and a half hours in the sleeper berth, then I drove 15 minutes. And then I did my two and a half hours in personal conveyance. Well, Terry, you can't just be personal conveyance in there. When I'm asked to move, yes, I can Yes, I can. And I can do it two and a half hours. Well, what happens if they are not moved two and a half hours of PC, just have to be off duty for two and a half hours? Well, what happens if when I get back and I'm unloaded, they make me leave again? Personal conveyance, nearest parking. Because using the split berth, that's still a part of the 10 hours off duty rule. Do you have to get creative? No. What you do is, is you get into the law. You get into the black and white, but you also get into your company's policy. And you make sure, because I'm not unloading my trailer. So if they make me move over to spot 43 instead of sitting here in spot 66, okay, you made me move. It's not getting around the system. It's understanding every single rule and step. And as we go on with these videos, as soon as we're finished with the cornerstone, I will tie in the personal conveyance the split sleeper berth, the trip planning, the things with the hours of service. So I just wanted to give you a little taste there of how understanding the law and the rule and utilizing it properly in connection with other things will um, you know, help you not get a service failure, even though it wasn't your fault. All right. That still doesn't make any difference for when we need to, you know, we need to keep moving so we can make money safely and legally. All right. I tried not to make this one 20, but it was anyway. I, uh, I pray that all of you are blessed and highly favored and, uh, thanks for coming.